property investing, I keep telling people, look, it's not a get rich quick. It's a get rich sure. It is the best money you can make in terms of, I would rather have 126 mm. grand profit from a property portfolio which cash flows every single month versus a business that probably even does a mill. Wealth creation is through own assets. Got to own assets. If you yeah. just sat on the same asset, you just exit and, or oh, you made 200 grand, 300 grand. But a person that's going to sit on it for the next 30 mm. years mm. might make a million pounds from the same asset you built for them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I'd rather be on the bottom of the right ladder than be on the top of the ladder that mm. isn't going where I want to go. So yeah. for a lot of people that the outcome doesn't align with the strategy they're doing. So it's like, you've got to lead with your outcome and your outcome will determine what strategy actually fits. I didn't come from wealth. I've just chosen that I want this and I've gone for it and I'm going for it. Nothing's stopping me. And again, it's okay to be in a, in a level where maybe you're not happy. That's just your life at the moment. Doesn't mean your life has to be that forever. You've got to now get into the right rooms, have the better conversations to now understand what it takes to become this new person. You're not defined by where you, where you come from, yeah. and I think that's a big message that I always yeah. want to tell people. Like, like you have to be able to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you grow up in ends, you don't realize it when you're confident, but you have an audacity to do things that ordinarily most people wouldn't be able to do. Welcome back to another episode of Take for Experience. We've got special guests in the building. Alfred, how are you doing? It's been a long time. I know, I know. I was going to ask you, am I, am I the first guest to come back? Or like, nah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, because you could have been one of the first. No, I had somebody else because um, that I knew personally. Like, okay, cool. A year ago, but you might have been one of the first if we had done it. A little bit earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, because cool. you know yeah. what? It's been over a year now. Yeah, it's been like we a year, like year and like a bit. August, yeah. Like yeah. last year, August. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been cool. it's got, it's cool. mad. It's a, lot, mad a, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot has happened. Yeah. <laughs> mad, mad. How yeah. you been anyway, generally? Uh, no, I've been all right. Just got back from Dubai. Uh, mm -hmm. I was doing a mastermind out there with a friend of mine called Tyler. Yeah. Um, so we just got back from that and kind of just back to business. For, like for me. A lot going on. I've got a project just finished on another six bedroom HMO. Mm. So we're just finishing on that. That's six bed, that's crazy. Um, yeah. So wow. a, lot, a lot going on. That's crazy, man. Okay. So anyway, for the people that haven't listened to that episode, which are, which is a really great episode, it's a really, <laughs> really like... good episode. I mean, you can still even share clips from, you know, even from then. Like who is um Alfred? So property investor, uh, ex project manager, I used to work in the corporate world, um, just aspired to make more money kind of delved into property investment for me it was like the way in which I can kind of build wealth and create wealth mm. um I think working quickly realized it's not going to get me the outcome I want so invested in my education got into property investing and kind of never looked back um in terms of oh I got fired <laughs> and then yes, got, yeah that was it yeah, yeah, yeah I got fired yeah. um and kind of I took a bet on myself say the goal all in on property mm. Uh, raise the money required to be able to get into deals, start now rather than try and do it later, mm. uh, rather than pick up a five-year-old CV and try and go again. Um, it's like I had nothing to lose in the sense, worst case, it doesn't work out, I can pick up a CV and, and go back to working again. And mm. for me, fortunately, it worked out. Uh, built a four million pound portfolio in the last three years. Out very well for you. <laughs> very well for you. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously for me, I can't look back now. It's like for me, just mm. business is, is what I'm used to now. It's just it's just the norm now. Yeah, it's yeah. a norm. And now, and obviously you were telling me and you were saying actually on the pod that you've just come back from Dubai. Um, I guess what was going on out there in Dubai? So yeah, so Dubai, the Dubai Mastermind basically is an experience, a uh, kind of hard thing to explain, but like a lot of, I guess the way we've structured it is we, myself and Tyler, um, kind of actually funny enough, we were, we, went, we were in Dubai and kind of thought, how can we do something together? And we kind of felt like the UK industry, property industry wise, there was nothing in terms of like this kind of high end property events. Cause it's kind of like, no, no offense, but like the, the, the stuff that's currently happening, the pins and stuff is just very casual, like mm. boring means and nothing really like aspirational. The environment you're in isn't great. So we thought again, what better place to do it than Dubai? So Dubai was one of the location in which we initially started it. We've done this our second one we've done mm -hmm. this year. Uh, I think we're gonna pick a new location. I don't know if I can say what location yet, but somewhere okay. somewhere where a lot of okay. billionaires live. <laughs> okay, so it's, is it for like very wealthy people? Is that the target? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's for wealthy people. It's for mm -hmm. people that are aspiring. Well, it's for anyone that's kind of aspiring to kind of get to kind of the, the 50K, 100K months in business, property. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of kept it, property slash business. Um, mm -hmm. So people that kind of been, have, or previous guests I've, I've, I guess I've tended this mastermind 
have kind of come from a business background. Okay. And some also property background, done yeah. a bit well, maybe doing about 10K a month. Okay. And are now looking to kind of aspire to do more in, in property business. How can they structure it? How can they create cash flow businesses? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've, we've kind of made an experience out of it. This, this time around was the F1. So yeah. we went to the F1 in Abu Dhabi. Okay. As um, part of the mastermind. Yeah, okay. yeah. We brought some guest speakers as well. So uh, Daniel Asheville mm. from Asheville Construction. Yeah, yeah, he's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah so we got him. Yeah. Uh, we flew him out again. Um, and okay. then, yes, yes. <laughs> it's got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 uh, yeah, it's a bit of money, isn't it? <laughs> Mad. So um, we flew him out and we also flew another guy called Daniel Priestley. Okay. Uh, big entrepreneur that. in the UK. For me, I feel like he's the UK mm. version of Alex Mosey. Very knowledgeable guy. Mm. Like around people have exited businesses. Okay. He's currently got a business. He's looking to exit in the next three years, 100 mil. Wow. So very very knowledgeable guy when it comes to business mm. building a personal brand he wrote a well-known book i would like to think for no anyways key personal influence okay that's uh, so a kpi so that's that's probably what he's probably known for the most when it comes to okay. kind of wow yeah wow um, and there's the whole list we had mike first and again yeah uh our peak performance coach as well mm. billy we brought him along we got, we got a few guys i think we wanted to kind of create this environment where one is it's inspiring to be in this environment, be around wealth. Mm. Um, more importantly, trying to teach property investors to kind of think from a business perspective as mm. opposed to kind of being just a property investor. Yeah. A lot of property investors are just point blank broke because they're asset rich, but cash flow poor. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of, again, how do you create cash flow businesses to sustain your investment businesses where mm. all you're doing is pouring money into these, which is good. But it's like, how do you survive during the time where yeah. like you're waiting for this asset to fruition, i.e. Mm. provide your income or have this outcome where there's a big exit, for mm. example. So being being in the room, we're just kind of, kind of cultivating this room to allow people to kind of get exposed to what's possible when kind of you structure mm. your business correctly and have everything kind of right from your personal run to raising capital to uh, creating a cash flow business to help yeah. sustain your, your business as well. So there's a yeah. lot that we do in the five and a half days. That's crazy. In Dubai. Yeah. How did you meet like all these people? I, I mean, a, a year ago when we spoke, did you know? Did you know these people? No, no. I don't obviously, feel obviously, like obviously, you did. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, to fair, selfishly, myself and Tyler kind of create this room to be able to bring these big names. Like okay. we, our, our aspirations to host mm. these rooms, whereby we can mm. get guys who are who've exited businesses and hundreds yeah. of millions, billionaires who have mm. had success in, in business and kind of learn from them and kind yeah. of in a way interview them and learn from mm. their guess they're, they're, they're trying to trials and tribulations running a business so yeah. it's that's kind of kind of i guess the theme for us is selfishly but everyone yeah. in the room that's there obviously benefits very intimate yeah uh last one we did had 10 people in there okay so very very small group it's not like very small group yeah. but very like obviously yeah high ambitious super ambitious people. entrepreneurs yeah. already doing yeah. well in business even okay um a few of the guys that were coming were already some seven figure business owners wow um and just wanted to be around other winners who were on a similar wavelength wanted mm -hmm. to go do more and not selling and kind of be being being me, I guess I don't want to say the word, but me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, gotta, you, you gotta, already you gotta, started, <laughs> mate. <laughs> you gotta hey. you gotta aspire to want more life. Nothing nothing wrong with kind of wanting more of life and wanting wrong. to There's nothing level up that. always. Like yeah. you might be in a good position, might feel like you're probably the mm. one that's winning in your circle, but mm. you gotta get into new circles where you're the small fish in, mm -hmm. in that circle and you that allows you to grow and kind of expand yeah. your mind of what's possible. Yeah. What is it about Dubai that has this um what's the word I'm looking for? this whole um, prestige, it seems like it's, cause obviously you chose there, you said you didn't choose London cause London is a bit like, uh, yeah. you know, what is it about Dubai that's got that, that has obviously, that Obviously don't get me wrong, like London, London is another capital, a big capital in, in the world. But I think in terms of like the, the Dubai just has a lot more to offer. Mm. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs have kind of migrated to Dubai now, mm. better condition of weather as well. <laughs> Yo, we and, and and also kind of taking people that are out of their current environment. So mm. again, for all the people that are coming, they're all based from UK. Mm. So we kind of want them to come out of their current zone and go somewhere different, more inspiring. Like we hosted the villa, uh, the mastermind in the villa. Okay. The villa alone costs like 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, for five days. Wow, so twenty k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and this is twenty k pounds. That's not the that, okay. It's not the deposit. <laughs> Maybe up north. Maybe up north. Mad. Um. So it's we just want to create this environment where people mm. are inspired and kind of want to have this lifestyle whereby it's. Do you know what I mean, it's it's what people desire and people mm. want, and you want to go for it. You don't. Just yeah. Pick one. Yeah. Would you move to Dubai? Is that something that's on on the cards for you? I, I think yeah. It's it's. Like last, this year, I think I 
I spent about three months, four months. Okay. There so out the year. So then, yeah. I don't know if it's something I'll stay. I think I've got a lot, lot to do in the UK still. Mm. And moving to Dubai might just hinder that process. Yeah. Uh, but I never say never. Like Dubai is a flight away, mm. so it's it not, is, it's yeah. not, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I think right now it's UK for now. Mm. Yeah. Describe Dubai to those that haven't been there. I've been there. You've been yeah, there. Yeah. But describe what it's it's like, so people kind of have like a bit of an understanding of. You know, because everybody's talking, oh, go to Dubai, or oh, I'm going to Dubai, business this, business that, and just not business, other stuff as well. What's, yeah, describe what it's I like. think it, some people might think it's artificial in terms of like, this. This. there's so much like, seeing a Rolls Royce is like very common. Like it's even the villa, bro, the, the villa, the, the, so basically when you go to the, um, Palm Jumeirah, Palm Jumeirah is basically this yeah. place where there's a lot of villas and all these hotels and stuff, but uh, the palms, so front, the, the, each, mm. each, each palm is called a front. Yeah, and the front that we were on, for example, our our villa wasn't even that far down, but maybe like maybe 100, 200 meters between the gate and where our villa was. There was at least maybe eight Rolls Royces. Like seriously, <laughs> yeah, from kind That's of crazy, crazy. All, all types of Rolls Royces, all like kind of luxury cars again to kind of be in those villas. These villas mm. probably cost about depending obviously what standard it is at, but I would say no less than seven mil mm. and upwards. So wow. to, to kind of live in that village in the first place, you have to have some level of wealth. Wow. Um, but yeah, Dubai is just just this environment where it's kind of like, you're kind of going to Mayfair and Soho, but like, this is like just a wider city. Mm. Everywhere you go is very luxury. Like other hotels are very luxury. Mm. Doesn't even matter where you stay. They're, they're all kind of done to a high wow. standard. That's crazy. Uh, lots of restaurants again. So it's, it's always become like a tourist hub. But mm. for me, it's, it's just this place that gets you to kind of think, damn, <laughs> like once upon a time this place was just sand yeah and someone had a vision to say i want to make, make this the, the, the best financial hub tourist destination and literally 20 years mm. we have this place where they're breaking records um they've made a man-made island mm. uh, do you know what I mean? which is a palm which now they're making a twice the size of that i can't remember, I can't remember what the new one's called but the, the current palm is huge but they're making twice is the it? size of that That's the whole crazy. entire lots on the um the new palm has been sold out. Yeah. I think it's sold really? out in an hour. Yeah. Sold out within an hour? Minimum order was 18 mil. 18 <laughs> mil. Where's all this wealth coming from? It's, like, around mate, the world. It's, 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 it's insanity. It's crazy. But it's, That's crazy. If you haven't been, you have to go experience it for yourself. I'm not yeah. here to Dubai, but like for me, it's an environment that I love to be around. Yeah. It just inspires me to kind of want more of life and just, mm. it's just a great environment. Like, it's, yeah. Like, can't can't go wrong, really. Yeah, it, I feel like it's one of them places that gets you to, you know, want to stretch yourself because, you know, when we're talking about money, it's it's such an interesting thing because there's so much to enjoy about it. And I think that's yeah. what it is. It gets you to, oh, like, I really like to do this. I want to do this. It's not like about, like, the cars or the houses. There's other aspects, you know. Yeah, yeah. You've obviously got the... Um, Again, I don't want to spoil it like too much, but obviously you've got the Burj Khalifa, you've got things yeah, like that, yeah. you know what I mean? That you can go and see. And now you're talking about the Palm. I don't think I went to the Palm last time that I went to, but the fact that you're saying that they're even thinking of building something beyond that, it just yeah. shows you the way that they think. It's just like, okay, how can we keep on like doing more? They, they ain't slowing down. Like they're, 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 I think for me, the biggest thing I love about Dubai is the fact that the leaders and the people that kind of, run the country are big on reinvesting back into the country mm. like can you when you kind of look at africa as a continent versus kind of dubai as a nation a country mm. it's like i wish our leaders were that <laughs> do you know what i mean like in terms of like that, wanting yeah. to yeah. literally develop the country like it just empowers people it mm. invites people to want to come mm. uh to kind of see and explore this environment that's been created do you know what i mean so f for me i just i love that the leaders, the leaders are just super wanting to back their country and mm they're all in on their country and like yeah. what's the best way to kind of get attraction what can we do to become the number one in everything mm. yeah um so for me that's yeah. that's amazing yeah I, I always have that argument <laughs> always have that argument why is africa not like the leaders of the power Wait, probably the there's money the money's there the money yeah. is there it's just obviously people aren't their, mm. their main focus is into develop the country which, which is a shame because like mm. there is a lot to offer in africa in general as a yeah. continent um countries alone some some have developed really well and some are just we're still far behind yeah it's like how can we be in this day and age and we're like roads yeah. like things you kind of you'd expect to have yeah as a, yeah, like as a nation man. it's not it's not yeah it's, it's, it's kind of there. not granted it's, yeah it's kind of if you're lucky you get it <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy man so I, I also noticed as well that you've got like uh you created a network right real property ventures i guess what what yeah, is that yeah so that's basically did my educational business. So 
obviously off the back of kind of gaining success of kind of building a portfolio mm. uh, and HMOs, property investing, people wanted to learn from myself mm. and kind of get mentored or get coached or be part of my network. Mm. So that that's kind of where people kind of come into in terms of wanting to surround themselves with me, have yeah. coaching calls in a group setting. Uh, learn how to raise capital or learn how to kind of invest in HMOs. So if mm. you don't know what HMOs are, in essence, layman's terms, a house share. So you've got a house where you convert it into mm. multiple units and you rent each room out individually to tenants. Um, and obviously that's an asset which then provides you income month to month. So people can understand, well, how does that work? And how do you raise money to get into that type of deals? Because obviously okay. it's capital intensive strategy mm. and people might feel like, well, let me do a lesser strategy maybe. But again, you've got to back yourself and understand that it's possible. Money, money shouldn't be the reason why you don't do uh, the thing that you want to do. Uh, there was a saying, uh, rather be on the um, the bottom of the right ladder mm. than be at the top of the ladder that I don't want to be on. Okay. Um, so it's like, you've got to get clear on like, what is it you want to get on? Yeah. And just find out the how, um, or in essence, the who. To kind of find out the how. So I'm, I'm the who. Yeah, you're the who. And, and yeah. I, That's I, crazy. Can give, I can give you the it, how. It looks like it is a big, uh, I mean, I've seen on Instagram, I don't know how, how big is the that network oh no right? so it's, it's not it's not huge i think obviously in terms of the, i think you're looking at the business page the business page obviously has got mm. a good following but in terms of the actual network there's probably about 30 people okay um, in that's there. sizable though yeah still yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's well hma investor very narrow focused on hma investing so if you're obviously mm. wanting to be a hma investor or aspiring mm. to be a hma investor or already even a hma investor and wanting to be around people that are literally focused on developing hmos raising capital mm. to develop hmos yeah. all across the country uh there's no better place to be um, yeah. So that's literally what the network is. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And what's, I guess, what's the vision for it? Is it just to keep on growing it bigger? Do you want to get them yeah. private events? Like, what, yeah. What <laughs> Obviously, I, there's no real, like, I haven't got something big of it. I think the main thing is to kind of help people that are aspiring to get into HMO investing okay. and kind of the whole BRR HMO yeah. process, learning that and also wanting to learn how to raise capital. Mm. Um, so it's like a 12 month membership to be part of it okay. and obviously you can renew for one two if maybe you, mm. you've kind of outgrown the group whatever um, then kind of your time will be done at that point but mm. yeah at the moment it's just the group coaching calls obviously mentorship which I'm very selective on like, I don't just mentor anybody like it's yeah. given one to one time with the individual yeah it's, 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 yeah for me it's more about kind of what I perceive in the time when I have a conversation with yourself mm. what you're trying to do are we aligned um, with your vision how I teach and how I want to do business as well mm. and if we are then great let's let's make it happen um and if we're not it's, it's fine yeah um so yeah yeah i think at the moment it's, there's nothing really like obviously there's other things i want to do like outside of that in terms of education wise mm. um but at the moment yeah that's just the property element yeah for now you know what's crazy <clears throat> i feel like you <laughs> i'm gonna say this now but i've heard or i've maybe seen results that alfred is a great shall I call, call you a coach teacher i call him a coach teacher yeah. but you don't talk enough i don't feel like you talk enough about it or big yourself up enough like you know a lot of other people what they'll they'll do they'll post a picture of oh this was my student and i da 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 yeah but i've heard of your students and you've never told me it yeah, but yeah, i've heard from yeah i've heard yeah, from yeah. you because other people have told me yeah kind of do you get what I'm trying yeah, to say it's like yeah, offline yeah. other people like oh yeah that that guy was Alfred student and then I then heard your student come up in a story we did I did a podcast with Tristan Cam okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so Cam met your Ethan yes which okay, is okay. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me not call him your student but he, yeah, yeah. He, he, was, he was in a mastermind group yeah, yeah, in yeah. a mastermind group yeah so that's that's the second time I heard about him yeah. you don't big you don't big yourself up enough about these things obviously, he's, obviously even 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 has gone on to do well like obviously he's yeah. he came into the group learned a lot from me and he's raised a lot of money he's now doing deals in London so like yeah he's gone on to do well mm. um obviously yeah but, but yeah like you said I'm, I'm that's I think for me, I'm just always racing. I'm just, I'm just moving forward. I don't you just like, forward. You don't really. I, I don't, like, yeah. yeah, I don't really reflect on like, oh yeah, like you said, I could position or Ethan, yeah. he's my student. Uh, yeah, he's we'll my mastermind group. Blah blah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, unfortunately, I haven't, I haven't. There's, there's other people. I just, I just haven't. It doesn't matter to me. Like as long as you're in, they're getting the result. They're moving yeah. on. They're, they're it's speaking growing. volumes. Or if people are talking about it, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to say yeah. like, and you haven't told me, but I've heard from other people. It then tells me, okay, wow, like they, it's actually working very well for them. Yeah, 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 no, they've, like he's like he's learning a lot. Like people that generally come, like being part of my network for 12, 12 months being around me. I'm sorry, you, you're going to change it in personality. <laughs> you're going to you're going to evolve as a human being. Your mindset's going to be stretched. Yeah, you're going to start thinking bigger. 
um, like you're gonna start thinking, damn, I can do a lot more. Like even mm. didn't, didn't have the aspiration he had before mm. prior to meeting me. Mm. So obviously being around me, spending more time with me, being a mastermind group. Yeah, he's now grown in mindset, grown in his belief system to be able to raise money. Mm. I think he's raised like six, seven hundred grand now. Wow, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Nearly a mil already. And I think he's built a two million pound portfolio so far, and this is like wow, two, three years for him, wow. maybe two years, maybe yeah. Wow. So okay. It's mm. like yeah, yeah. There, there, there you have it. <laughs> Results. <laughs> there you have it. No, you know because I mean? it's social proof, isn't it? That's what you have to. That's what it's not only that you've done it. Like other people have done it behind you. So I think that's what kind of sets you apart from a lot of other people. A lot of you actually did it. Yeah. A lot of people haven't done it. Yeah. So yeah. do you get what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did it. Yeah. And then you taught other people how to do it. That's yeah. a different ball game. Some people just teach. They've never done it. It's Do you get what I mean? It's mad, it's mad, it's mad. <laughs> Some people mad. teach, but they've never built it. Like, so it's how mad. can you, not to say that there's no, like, you know, I, I think there's um, always, you know, room for education, but I think it hits different when you've also done it. Yeah, you know what I mean, course. you just yeah, have yeah, a bit yeah. more about you, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so last time when we spoke, uh, just over a year ago, um, so, you know, obviously you had your six properties, yeah. And I think I listened back to it. You had two more on the way, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess what, how many properties are in the portfolio now at this point? There is nine. So like, nine, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the two, I think, obviously, yeah, uh, we've we done, I mean, just, we just finished the ninth one now. So like, mm. um, yeah, for me, it's been a long journey. I think for me, it's like the HMO game. Obviously, I've, I've been there, kind of mm. been known. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm known for, like doing HMO. Like, I've just, that's been my bread and butter. Um, but I recently did some flats. Okay. So I think uh, one of the projects last last one before this one was a commercial building. Mm. I say commercial. It's still from the outside it looks like a house. It was a house that was being run. Um, was it lawyers that were there before? It was just some offices um, that were set up there. Obviously, the guy was looking to exit the market. Uh, it's been empty for a while, mm. and so I converted those ones to flats because again, the neighboring properties were flats. So mm. that was the main reason. So it's my only one where it's like kind of. I split into four flats as opposed to kind of going like a yeah. a large eight bedroom HMO or something like that. Mm. And there was no real like genius thing behind it. It was just, I was going for what already, already working, which is neighboring properties are flats. So why try and reinvent the world? Just mm. just go for what we know is going to get approved. Mm. Numbers wise made sense as well. So it's like, why not? Um, and so, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's the HMO game has been the game. Um, I'm, I'm looking, obviously, commentary, commentary. So obviously, I, if people don't know, I invest in commentary. Yeah. And commentary's now kind of changed its rules around HMO. So there's something called Article 4, mm. which basically stops you from being able to buy a house uh, and convert it straight away into a okay. HMO. So it's, it's made things difficult. A lot of the investors left the market who were in kind of in the market just buying houses and convert to HMOs. Mm. I, I've always been in the market to buy a house, but I've always had to go through planning. Okay. So the planning aspect has never been, it's not new to me in terms of like, I've been doing it since day one. Um, for a lot of the investors that were in the market, they weren't doing that. They were just buying a house and converting it straight away because okay. that was permitted development rights yeah. to do that. Now the game's changed and obviously it's a lot more strict in terms of like trying to convert a house. Mm. Now it's kind of like a no-go zone in terms of buying a house and converting it. Um, you can obviously still buy an existing HMO, maybe mm. a retiring landlord who's had it for 30 years. Mm. Is, during it's kind of not looking the part anymore. Needs updating. And look to maybe increase the unit size, so I add another additional room, yeah. or even keep it as it is and re, re renovate the number stack. Okay, um, and still do as a strategy, but obviously there's a limited stock of that. Yeah, of landlords selling their HMO. So okay, so that's only buying and reselling HMOs basically. Yeah, so I don't. Okay. So as a strategy, in terms of like, in terms of HMO, obviously I'm gonna have to look elsewhere. So kind okay. of new year, new strategy. That's a new yeah. strategy, new location potentially. Yeah. But also I'm thinking of bigger things. I, I want to. I've, I've never spoken in the last podcast about nah. buying bigger buildings. So nah, nah. Yeah. So so for me, next step is to. I want. I'm in the process of launching a fund. Is it? So okay. yeah, yeah. So what, for me, property fund. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Man. So the idea is, I want to bring on some equity partners. Mm. So up to this point, it's all been debt based. I mm. borrow money. Mm. Do what I want to do. Pay my investors back, and I own the assets. There's no involvement with investors. But kind of now moves to a structure whereby I have investors who are got money, time poor, but want to be in great assets. I great cash flow assets over time, mm. um, increase in value as well. So in essence, become like a fund manager. Okay. So imagine I've got 20, 30 million 
raised, mm. I can then go and utilize that to go and buy property. Okay. And try and buy a property in prime location and manage that asset mm -hmm. in terms of it performing um, in terms of return. And obviously um, over a long period of time, help my investors also get a better return on their money. Yeah, wow. And, and be equity partners, mm -hmm. actually truly be equity partners for once. Because I, I, at the moment it's all just me them borrowing money and there's no equity share in the property itself yeah. so it's an exciting journey but there's a lot of rules around that as well how you raise money and yeah um so it's kind of the game i'm kind of trying to figure out at the moment okay but That's i'm big. hoping to launch that next year mad well, so next I'm year launching, yeah. yeah and that'll be in the uk i mean yeah, yeah UK that was one with. of the big thing mad yeah Wow, man, you said a you said a lot there, and a lot a lot is going, and a lot seems like a lot of things are changing. Do you feel like the Coventry thing? Do you feel like they saw that you guys were making money, and they thought, now nah, we gotta stop this. We gotta just like don't get me wrong. Coventry Coventry's been a an area for like HMOs for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. Like someone, some, remember like, when I go in the game, like some people, these old guys, like mate people have rents HMO. I've been doing this for <laughs> years. They've made their money, and like, do you know what I mean? They've they've done they've they've literally rents the strategy out. And obviously I, I kind of knew like when even when starting out, I knew that there was kind of resistance around even getting planning gains on like mm. conversions of property. The first one was quite straightforward. The second one got a bit harder. The third one got a bit harder. It just kept getting harder and harder. So I just knew that article four was coming. Okay. So it's stopping you from being able to convert a house straight away. And so I always used to tell people like, look, get in the market as soon as possible because this thing is, is coming at some point. COVID mm. slowed it down. Mm. I reckon it would have been here in 2021. 20, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes 2020, sense. 2020, yeah. 2020, 2021. Yeah. But because COVID happened, they slowed it down and mm. delayed it by a year. And they kept delaying it, even when they tried to even release it. And finally, it's now come in place and it's, it's, it's done now. It's like the commentary market is pretty much dead. <laughs> So if you're looking at Coventry, I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's a this this guy and these people it's done it. It's good. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> rinsed it. It's too late. You're too late to the market. The only the only game in town now, like we just said, right? There's not much stock of that. Is mm. retiring landlords who yeah. have got tired properties, and even that there might not be enough meat in the bone because wow. they want to sell their thing. Imagine someone's had it for twenty years. Mm. They want to have a big exit, so they're looking yeah. for a premium as as high as possible price yeah. point. So they're not going to let go for like some mm. chicken change. Um, so. Yeah, it's trying to find and negotiate something like that, and it just me on the bone still to be yeah. able to renovate and see some uplift, mm. which is pretty very marginal. So I don't think that yeah. strategy is going to be great. So wow, yeah, That's crazy. Wow. Okay, fair enough. We'll, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit more about strategy a little bit later. The fund aspect. Do you have like a target of how much you want to raise for it? Everyone, I can, everyone can, I can, I, I've kind of I haven't publicly f officially announced like I'm raising a fund. I kind of okay. I, I keep, You're just keeping keep it quiet. Yeah, yeah. I can, no, I won't say keeping. People, people kind of know, but like there's nothing officially launched. Okay. Um, I'm just in the process of kind of gathering data on how to correctly do this. Okay. Um, and in short, I'm, I'm kind of I don't want to last one of these launch a fund, and I've got. Mm -hmm. um, FCA knocking on my door saying, Alfred, how, how do you compliantly raise the money from these mm -hmm. people? Uh, you're, you're going into these assets, marketing, all the stuff. So I want to just make sure all of this is done correctly yeah. before launching. But I do intend it for it to be a big, like, I want to own thousands and thousands of, of units. Wow. Um, so is, imagine like imagine owning one of these has, like high rise buildings in Canary mm -hmm. Wolf. Like, I'm, I'm talking about prim prime, prime real estate. Yeah. I'm not, not, not some like half hearted flats and apartments. <laughs> no, no, no. This is like prime locations, high owners. These guys talk about owning Selfridges, Harrods, all bro, of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Like these are, these are secure assets. Like, bro, you can't yeah. like, who, do you think the guys who own our Harrods will have to even, even think about what like nah. money coming in tomorrow? Nah, like the not. next month? They're not. they're not. There's certain things that you know that there's, is always going to be there. Right. You know, even uh, I even heard something that TFL's got like one of the largest real estates in the yeah. UK. Like they've got a lot of yeah. real estate. And they, obviously they're not real estate, they're, you know, travel, but apparently yeah. they've got like, real estate everywhere, places that you don't even know that they've got it. So, wow. Okay. I hear that. Do you know anybody else that's done something similar? This is the thing. So yeah. I'm, start, I'm starting to actually, actually, this is the thing. This is the great thing about kind of once you start like wanting to do something, it's, it's now kind of, you start kind of seeing more of it now mm -hmm. or like, well, I say more of it. It's not. It's, I don't think it's. It's not a thing that is done. Or at least, or not from a private individual. Yeah. Basis. It's not something yeah, that's done. That becomes it. Yeah. Like the corporations and stuff. Yes, there are like private equity funds mm. and banks and stuff that like corporations that do this mm. stuff. Um. But again, very very kind of hush hush. No. Mm. Yeah. Kind of exchange of hands, change of wealth. You don't really. Yeah. Like, you don't. Really, you, have you ever seen a, a two hundred unit building go for sale? No, we haven't. <laughs> nah. But they, I'm telling you, people have exchanged this yeah. year alone, and maybe a billion transactions have gone through. Yeah. Um. In real estate, in terms of those type of assets. Hmm. So it's unfortunately there isn't like a blueprint mm. like readily available. It's the same way you kind of look at HMOs okay. and all the other strategies that's that are crazy. out there. 
So it's a lot of like trying to get in the right rooms, yeah, in front of the right agents, yeah, to kind of learn the process. Obviously, I've seen a lot of guys in the US do it. Yeah, so they they seem a bit more yeah US, prime to that. Yeah, yeah, US US market. Mate. Anyone can call up and say, "Hey, look, I saw this twenty unit building on the website. Would love to walk to walk the premises when it's available to view it." Mm. And agent will just say, "Yeah, when you when you're ready." Whereas here, there isn't even a, uh, like a website to even look at that. Mm. You have to know the brokers that've got those type of assets. Yeah, who they are, yeah. and no, well, at least they need to know of you. So if mm. that comes up, opportunity comes, they know who they're, who they're messaging and who they're, yeah. they're calling. But remember, they're calling like pension funds and stuff like that mm. to uh, like sovereign funds to purchase these type of assets. Yeah, they're the guys that have that level of wealth. Yeah. Um. So it never really, it never these kind of, these things never go on market. Mm. They, they are a market, but not a market. It's like a, mm. it's like this hidden market. Yeah, that it's, it's the next market. It's like you said, relationship thing, and um, I think like like you said, there's no blueprint, but you almost be that blue. <laughs> you're almost gonna be the blueprint if you yeah. If you so it off. And, and that's the idea. Like I, yeah. I want to be the, the biggest owner of these kind of build to rent mm. schemes that are happening. In the so a lot of developers are developing build to rent schemes. Mm. So I want to I, I want to kind of clean up all these build to rent mm. guys that because again the, the plan is they may build it. They rent it for three, five years, and then they look to sell it to like a pension fund or my yeah. someone like me. Mm. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to amass all these developers, their okay, projects that's, yeah, in, in, that's in great good. locations. Obviously, yeah. key key determining factor is great locations, prime yeah. assets, not just a building site in some middle of nowhere. Okay, wow, yeah, good luck with big, it, man. Big play, man. It's a yeah, big play, man. Let's big play. See. A lot, a lot to, a lot to kind of. For me, is this is kind of a, a, a even slower game. Yeah, but this isn't like again, like property investing. I keep telling people, look, it's not a get rich quick. It's a get rich sure. Like mm. this is years. Like the fund will be ten years minimum. Mm. Of I say five, ten years, five to ten years minimum. Yeah. Um. So you, when you put funds in, that's a lot for that period of time. Yeah. And we're gonna go acquiring assets. And the good thing is, obviously, these are assets that people take pride in. I.e., yeah. you're gonna be like, oh, I own a piece of this property mm. in this in this location. Because mm. they're landmark assets, yeah, um, and, that, and that's the idea. Of how and the mechanics is yeah. still in play to kind of yeah. figure out and make it happen. But that's that's the next vision for me. That's, yeah. that's the big play for that's me. That's the big play. I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing that, man. Yeah. All right. Anyway, going back to the portfolio, right? So yeah. I've seen this on social media, but we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. So yeah, how much is that portfolio? So you said it's nine properties. How much is that generating? I guess you in income at the moment. So we're well, about thirty four, thirty five. Wow. K a month. That's crazy. Um, and then yeah, assets wow. wise about four and a half million. One and a half million. Yeah. Wow. So it's been a it's, obviously to the again to the normal person, it sounds like a, a crazy story. I, I know guys are I mean I've triple ten X like this is in this three is, years though. Ten X. No, so ten X in three years crazy. No, no, so a hundred right, there's a guy. Mm. Again, I went to this thing called Fun Launch in the US. Um and yeah, there was a twenty-seven-year-old. He's a mass. He, he, these are hotels, big, yeah. big, um, well-established hotels. Mm. Acquired three hundred million. I think it's three two five, three hundred twenty-five million. Mm. Um, and that was eighteen months. So, okay, but that's yeah. a fun though. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's, 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 okay. It's but fun, this is you yeah. personally. You yeah, done yeah, this yeah, personally. Yeah, personally. Okay. I guess. Okay. But is for yeah. me, I see. I, I put them in the same category because. Okay. Because yeah, it's a fund. Yeah, yeah. you got money. You raise the money to kind of go into type of asset classes. You build a team around you. But same way I built my portfolio, I had to build a team. I had yeah. to raise money. Mm. So it's just on a much smaller scale. Okay. So this is why I'm confident around. I can I can scale the finance raise side of yeah. things and go into bigger assets. And mm. actually, I think on the big assets actually mm. even more easier to raise mm. a lot more money mm. uh, because they have equity in these assets. I'm not just saying, oh, hey, borrow me 200 grand to go and buy some property. Mm. It's, hey, bring a million pounds, bring two million pounds. We're going to buy this amazing asset that performs. Yeah, uh, It's a great location. Mm. Like amenities are amazing, place to live in. So it's like there is this, they see this, like in a way, like a glossified <laughs> brochure of like this amazing yeah. place to stay in. Like, yeah, I'm in. I want to own a piece of that. Yeah. And so that's that's the play, and um, and for me it's an exciting play because, like again, you learn like making money sometimes when you when you start on the bigger numbers, mm. you don't, you just need to make small percents. Mm. Like if you want if you want yeah, that's the two three percent yeah, yeah two three percent this 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 game about to play is like a two three percent game yeah, and but it's two two three percent of hundreds of millions yeah so two two percent on a hundred mil yeah that's two million yeah that's like exactly here's two mil in your hands yeah. Thank you, thank you for your service. Yeah, and not ongoing. Obviously, manage manage the fund year, and yeah. you're gonna get paid as well. When you refinance, you're gonna get paid another two percent. Yeah, um, so it's not it's not bad. And you're gonna I'm gonna not I'm gonna just mm. buy one hundred million pound asset. I'm gonna buy a billion, a few a few billion if possible. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how long that would take, but that's mm. that's the that's the trajectory I'm going on. When I, when I say I'm serious mm. about building 
this portfolio where I'm amassing all these build to rent schemes, that's that's the plan. Yeah. The market's going that direction. A lot of buildings are now kind of having a whole complex of just rented rentable mm. units. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to kind of build and sell. Mm. Our developers would, would usually do and try and cash in their profits uh, early on. I mean, you're on the way there anyway, right? Because even though you think the 34, 35... <laughs> Okay, a month is like ah oh, yeah compared to that guy you could always say that at any point right, right? And, and, and that's and that's and that's revenue that's that yeah. that's not so pro profit wise on that yeah. maybe 16 17k that's the um, money, it's still, still, but then i then i met someone into again one of the guest speakers that spoke at yeah. the uh, dubai mastermind yeah 126k pounds a month well, profit, profit in property. Profit. I, in I, property. Where do you invest in property? So obviously, so he's obviously a master of wealth, and yeah. every time he makes money, he just buys ca properties cash. He just in, buys it cash. cash. Where no, does he do? No, London, uh, Dubai. He's got okay. something in London. Okay. He's from London originally. Um, okay, so all his properties are in Dubai, and that's how mainly, he's okay. yeah mainly in, wow. in Dubai. But that that inspiring to think, yeah, because I, I I even said oh so because I, I when he says one hundred twenty six, that's about usually Durham's is about four x pounds yeah so i kind of oh so is that is that like um forty thousand? sorry is that forty thousand pounds um yeah. I, I, thought, I was thinking you're talking about endurance yeah. because no bro 126 pounds sterling wow like i was like wow 126k a that's month crazy like clean in, in profit and, and, well. and for me as well this is why i love property so much mm. it is the best money you can make in terms of i would rather have 126 mm. grand profit from a property portfolio which cash flows every single month mm. versus a business that probably even does a mil mm. like a month because that mill a month you have, every month is zero you have, you're gonna you're gonna have to get new revenue mm. it's very hard to you know just, i don't know if you know there's a lot of business models are trying to like go this whole recurring model of like yeah, getting income in description yeah, yeah description yeah, models yeah, trying to sustain yeah. the income it's more for like exits as well to help mm. prove more worthy of value in, in the business mm. but business is tough like it's not like yeah. you know what i mean it's not having that cash flow from from this property it's like that is just going to be there. Yeah, you ha you don't go to zero each month. It's like a, it's a recurring thing. It just it just comes in a month hmm. in an account. You don't think about it. Business business today doesn't mean it's going to be good business tomorrow. Yeah. So for me, passive income from property. And I, I know passive is like you, you lose term. There is no such thing as passive, but property in terms of rental income is probably the nearest to passive income you will receive. Yeah. Um, when it comes to running a business. Mm. So for me, it's like that money. Mm. He knows he he values that he, and he does 120 mil a year. He wow. values that 126k a month more than he does the business doing 120 mil. That's crazy because he understands. Yeah, that that can just that can just swerve. If yeah. The market shifts. If the yeah. Dubai bubble bursts. That's it. Like he can just half revenue can, can disappear. Mm. Um, and so like that security there where he's got his property owned cash yeah. assets, providing 126k a month. It's, it's, that's it's wild. super for me that, I was like wow yeah, okay I said bro say no more that is crazy I'm getting to work <laughs> okay fair enough I'm getting to fair work enough, I'm getting enough. to work this, this, that's and, crazy and, and, and this is the thing this is the yeah. thing about surrounding yourself with people are playing the game on mm. a bigger level this why mm. myself and Tyler hosted these rooms and kind of like got these pay for these guest speakers mm. to come and speak and share their journey because only until someone tells you what they're doing how they're massing wealth yeah. and how they've gone about doing it and their strategy and their thought process of how to build wealth mm. you're thinking fuck okay I need to there's definitely like a whole new level to this yeah. like yeah I'm doing I'm not, don't give me, I'm, not taking, I'm not taking what I've done for granted yeah. what I've done is amazing it's like you know I mean it's, it's incredible in the space of time I've done it having to kind of go through all the trials and tribulations to actually get there mm. make it happen for myself that's all amazing but it's like just because I've done it doesn't mean I can't aspire to do more yeah so for me I'm, I want to get into better environments I want I want to always feel mm. small in terms of getting rooms where guys mm. are telling you 126 and I'm, I'm trying to correct them saying it's, <laughs> is, is that 40k I was like no it's not 40k bro it's 126k <laughs> a month uh, I can't bro I can't unhear that now that's, yeah that's all I'm thinking how quickly can I get to 126 yeah. profit this is yeah. not this is not even <laughs> clean profit every time I speak to you I feel, I feel like there's a new story <laughs> When it was last year, it was the um, it was Rolex being <laughs> Rolex being cheap. Now this year is hundred times it wrong. I wonder what next year is gonna be, man. <laughs> this is how we have these conversations to like expand our <laughs> expand our minds. Um, like for you though, do you feel like there will be a stage where you feel like okay, I can chill, bro? Oh, that's not you. It's not. It's not me. I don't. I, <laughs> and and if you everyone talks about retirement, mm. and for me. I just don't believe. I, I, maybe I hadn't. Maybe when I was a lot younger, and mm. leaving university, I used to think, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some money and retire and have this life and kick back." 
But no, like the concept of retirement for me is flawed. Mm. It's actually like a state of decline because you're not evolving. You're co like you're coasting. If you're if you aren't literally if you're just doing this, just staying at one level, you are you are declining. Mm. You're not because everything everything else is like going up and doing mm. do, doing doing more. So it's like you've got to just always want to be your best version of yourself. So mm. for me, that's like a never ending cycle. There is no end goal. There is no. Mm. It's just whenever my time is up, my time is up. Okay. Whatever I've achieved after that point, I've, I've achieved. But and don't get me wrong, I take time out, I, I do things, I enjoy myself. And I think one thing I'm starting to realize more is obviously enjoy the moments. Like don't just be on this hamster wheel of just grinding, 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 like celebrate, enjoy, enjoy some of your money. Like just just do stuff that you, you kind of, you've worked hard, you achieve something that you want to treat yourself to something cool, treat yourself, you want to take time out, two weeks, take time out, like just whatever. But the, for me, there isn't like, oh, I'm going to get to this level of wealth and I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to just kick back and sit back. Like life gets boring. Like, I've tried to sit back and do nothing. And my body just itches, like, what are you doing? Like, or like you're, you're on planet Earth and you're just wasting away, you don't really do anything yourself. You don't feel, I, don't, I wouldn't feel fulfilled if I just mm. sat there doing nothing and just mm. thinking like, I've got to a good position and yes. Cause I could, I could, bro, I could sit down now and like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, yeah. Do you know what I, mean? I'm, I mean, yeah, you could. Yeah, I, you could. I, I could, but like this, I think this, it's a game and I like the chase of like, mm. seeing if I can do it. Okay. So like this building this billion pound portfolio of like equity partners and raising hundreds of millions, mm. like, like it's an right now that's an aspirational thing i had no idea of like how or like i just know my some way somehow i'm going to figure out it's just a matter of time mm. that that i'm com like i have super yeah. conviction on like it's going to happen mm. whether it happens in two years 10 years it's happening okay there's nothing there's nothing stopping that like yeah. that, there's, there's just, just nothing stopping it yeah. it's just yeah just a matter of time yeah so i i think like, the good thing obviously once you plant the seed mm. You start to get in the mode of like how could how the how how can I get this? Who can I connect with to help me yeah. make this happen? Uh, what does it take to become this person that amasses that level of wealth or amasses the type of assets? So you start kind of working backwards in massing it, yeah, and um, building relationships around people that can help you get there, yeah. So, bro, it, it, from me and my man, there's no doubt. You already know as well, right? There's, there's, I know this. I know this. Man. I just thought I'd ask. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Mad. So, you know, obviously, the other thing that, you know, I guess people will be wondering is interest rates. Obviously, the, yeah. Yeah, the interest rates have been a mad thing. We know that, like, basically doubled. Yeah. How has that kind of had, like, an impact on what you're doing, with, obviously, with your HMOs, basically? Yeah, it's so a very simple, obviously, economy of scale for me, very simply, because I've been fortunate where I'm not starting now, it's not my first deal I'm doing, I've done multiple properties. I had obviously previously enjoyed the lower rates, the four and a half percent, the five percent, which people even at the time thought that's, that was high. Mm. So I like, just got a refinance done and they're quoting seven 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 point zero nine, so seven percent, um, so pretty much two percent increase. But obviously, if you kind of look at the entire portfolio. So this, this, this is the privilege of having a portfolio now. Mm. Like you can now kind of, that interest rate is now kind of mixed across the entire portfolio. So mm. as a flat rate across my entire portfolio, I'm probably still around 6%, okay. or even sub six. Uh, Cause I've got four and a halves within there, I've got fives there. Mm. I've got some sixes as well. And now the mm. seven has come in. So if you kind of do the average of the entire yeah. um, mortgage rate on across the entire four, four million pound plus portfolio, mm. then you're like, okay, cool. It's not actually that bad. I'm, I'm like averaging 6%, which is which is still a good rate. Mm. And a good thing, again, my philosophy has always been to fix the mortgage for five years. Because five years, you have enough time to build wealth, your income position, five, my, well, my income five years ago, I don't even know where that was. Mm. What, 5K, yeah, five, yeah, 5K a month. Mm. I'm not 5K a month, I'm in a much different position yeah. to where I am now. So like these mortgages, when they come to refinance, my income will probably be, I don't know, 50, 100, whatever, whatever the number is. So it doesn't matter where the market comes. If it's 10% interest rates, it doesn't matter to me. I can still sustain it. So you are trying to have these constant variables, which is kind of fixing these rates. So I appreciate what getting in now. Yeah, it's tricky. Mm. But again, you look at real estate, real estate is a 20, 30 year gameplay. Yeah. You can't look at the current market and think about, oh, it's super high, so I'm not going to get into the market. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Some, some of my investors, I, I think they're envious as well because they they were, they were had they had a lot more money. They, they probably gave me 50K, 100K, but they had like four, 500 grand around them. Mm. And they were waiting for the dip, waiting for this dip, this dip, this dip. It never came. And they, they've watched me amass mm. 4 million pounds in three years. So yeah. if it just went into the market, the assets that I bought three years ago, some of have increased in equity, like 50 grand mm. already. And it's only, it's only been three years, two, three years. Mm. So it's like, the real estate game is about timing the market and not yeah. trying to time the market because mm. this is where everyone's trying to, oh yeah, the rates are high. Maybe I'll wait for the rates to go down. What if the rates are going to go up again? Mm. You're going you're gonna to keep missing opportunities. Yeah. 
like the the the, the, the property prices to keep going up. Mm. <laughs> they're not, they're not, I ain't seen them going they, up. Really. Yeah, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, it's like going. it's a long, long term game. So you got to think. Look, if I buy it today, look at the guys that bought property thirty years ago. That's true. Like some places in some places where like you, mate, they bought it for like hundred k in London. Mm. Like London, just people need to go back and look at some of these property prices. <laughs> That's a mad the thing, same bro. property we're looking at 500 grand minimum 600 grand 700 yeah. grand people bought literally 20 30 years ago for 100 grand yeah that's insane to get a place for 100 grand in london that's that you you must hit jack, jack yeah ball. i mean a lot of them people would have retired by now though that's yeah but the point yeah. i'm trying to make is yeah that if imagine if they said it was too expensive then that's true which when, would have they, technically relatively, could have yeah, been right? yeah, 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 relatively, yeah, yeah, yeah. relatively yeah but yeah. They, they, they bought the asset and again yeah. wealth creation is through owning property over a long period of time yeah it's not trying to again trying to like mm. do a quick flip and that, yeah. flipping is a bullshit strategy I'm sorry guys Who, <laughs> if you flip you're wasting your fucking time <laughs> Because bro, it's funny. I'm not even gonna say who said it. I saw many podcasts who you know well. Oh really? You're gonna offend him. Oh no, we'll talk, we'll oh, talk no. after. We're gonna talk. We'll talk after. No, no, but it's, 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 I'm sorry, but it's, it's just a bullshit strike. Because like, yeah. when uh, there's no developer hand on heart that can say, "Oh, mm. I, I bought." Let's say you might even made two, three hundred grand. I don't care. You're gonna be made a million pound on a, mm. even a development. This is why developers are broke. Like big developers, they mm. build like billions in property. Mm. They've cashed out, flipped onto the next big project, and they've got nothing to their name. Mm. So guess what all developers are now doing build to rent schemes because they now understand yeah. rather than cashing profits on day one, if I just hold for another five years, increase the rents, someone's going to buy a premium off my hands. So rather than make, make a million pound profit, maybe I hold for five more years, mm. I'm going to make three million pound profit. Yeah. So this is like, this This is it's a different game. Yeah. You're kind of catching okay, wealth creation is through own assets. Yeah. You've got to own assets. If you yeah. just sat on the same asset, you just, you just exit and, or you made 200 grand, 300 mm. grand, but a person that's going to sit on it for the next 30 mm. years mm. might make a million pounds from the same asset you built for them. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's my game. This, this, this is my, this is what I'm saying, the fun. You can already see how I'm going to make money. Okay. That's mad. I'm going to buy off your hands. You might think I'm buying it at a premium, but I'm, I'm sitting in this game for a long, long time. Yeah. I'm gonna just wait for it to appreciate and value the rice, the rice, the uh, the rent is gonna increase over time, and which helps the valuation of the property as well. Mm. So all these these things. So that's why for me, like selling property, like I keep people keep saying I'm, I'm mad for this, but like I don't plan to sell anything. I I, I say you're mad for wanting to keep. Yeah, assets. wanting to keep. Okay. Yeah, and not it's like oh you know are you gonna sell, bro? I'm like no, I don't. <laughs> wait, do you think I, I spent all this time building this asset base, this income base? For me, income is great and getting a catch, catch sum of money in my hands. Mm. I will always take income over like a lump sum mm. of money because mm. guess what, lump sum of money you have to go work again to make this lump sum of money. It's true. No, that's income a good recurring point, yeah. income that bro that money that I'm making now does, 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 doesn't mm. matter whether I I work I don't work that thirty five grand is dropping into bank account mm. every single month without mm. fail. So for me, it's like it's that 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 is true for me, true wealth. Mm. Like that can't be taken away from me. Yeah. Um, it's it's there, and all I'm doing is building on top of it. Yeah. I'm stacking. So 126 grand a month. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> I'm telling let's you, bro. Go. Then a hundred. Then a hundred <laughs> mil, <laughs> bro. Mad. Honestly, honestly, mad. Honestly. So so you obviously you talked a bit about the challenges in commentary. What about like? Were there any other challenges that you came across, obviously, in 2023, like in, in like the property? Yeah, year? there's obviously a lot of things. I'm going for a challenge now. My refinance is late. Okay. So unexpected. I finished a project three weeks ago. We finished on the 7th of um, November. I had to value it in a week after, pretty much, maybe a week, maybe four or five days mm. after. Uh, valuation came, came like maybe 18th or some, something like that, 18th of November. So even I've come back from the buy, I think I've seen sent an email to my broker saying, hey, like we complete on Friday, right? I think it was impossible. <laughs> it was like a 30 day delay. Uh, at the moment, as it stands, you're likely to have your refinance done by January the 8th. Whoa. I'm like, what? January the 8th next so year? So it's like, it's, it's kind of made things a bit uncomfortable in terms of like, obviously money's locked in. I've got like 100K plus locked in that project, which I'm trying to get back out on refinance. Uh, so it's like just uncomfortable, just times and just like everything I'm kind of, I'm mm. just... Yeah, it's, it's a pain right now. So it's a headache. Mm. Obviously, interest rates haven't been great because obviously it's it's eating to my profits that I would normally yeah. get on a deal. But again, like I said, when you kind of analyze across the entire portfolio and all the interest rates combined mm. as an average, it's not bad. So for me, it still makes sense to do so. Yeah. And even anyone starting out, like you still think, I'm, I'm still backing that it's still sensible to do that because ultimately it's uh, kind of, a, I don't want to get technical, but like in terms of when you borrow debt, all that matters is can you cover your debt, your financing mm. and your debt. Um, so I, your debt service cover ratio. So like usually there's like a number you look forward to kind of saying, what is my um, cover on this, this debt I've taken out? So mm -hmm. if your mortgage is 2K and you're making three grand, 
you've still two grand covers the mortgage, you've got a grand profit still. So the answer is you want to have a grand. Yeah, maybe you could have had a grand five mm. based on the previous rates, but you're still making money. Mm -hmm. And what's happening, which is the kind of invincible money, but like the assets appreciating over the next five years or two year fix, whatever you've got on a yeah. mortgage. So that's the play you're actually making as well. Mm. And obviously people don't see it at the time. So it's like, it's a bit yeah. of a difficult one to kind of understand, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna hold for five years, gonna increase, but they can't see that tangibly. Yeah. They're, not, they're not getting paid that money. Mm. The rent money is what they're getting paid. Mm. So for me, it's, it's still, it still makes sense. Okay. Wow, so HMO still is still the strategy. Yeah, it may, thinking buy to let's are like, profit margins are dead yeah, on that now. Basically. Yeah, yeah, because they kind of wiped out like, imagine having to put 60 grand, 70 grand, just to make 200 pound, <laughs> 200 pound what's it called on that money it don't, it don't make sense <laughs> it don't make no sense so, at all like, who, that's a bad deal it's a bad deal so like <laughs> a lot of vital to let landlords are trying to find ways to kind of increase their cash flow on the asset i.e. service accommodation mm. uh, their units and stuff uh, temporarily to kind of manage this crisis until it kind of slows down by again who knows how long that would, that would take yeah yeah so okay so obviously you, 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 you're still backing it but do you do you think it's sensible in 2024 or do you think it's like a wait and see thing back to my quote property is about time in the market yeah. and not okay. kind of time the market okay. so i think anyone that's considering getting into property obviously for me get clear on your outcome so i think for, for me i want to go and address this so mm -hmm. low hanging fruit rent to rent Never, another bullshit thing. I'm sorry. If, if, for a lot of people that are like... <laughs> this guy's come on smoke today. Yeah, no, I am. I am. I, I, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm, I'm really coming on smoke today. But just, I just... Not, and again, I'm not, I'm not here. So maybe for some people, yeah, rent to rent is a great strategy. Mm. But just when I sit down and ask a lot of people like what it is, because again, like, my mm. education company, people coming through wanting to learn from me. Mm. And I kind of assess, okay, where you are at the moment? What's kind of your vision? What's your mm. outcome? What are you doing this for? Everyone talks about generational wealth. Yeah. Rent to rent, I am sorry, it's not generational wealth. You own no assets. You're in this vehicle where we have no control, i.e. the landlord can come at any given time and say, oh, look, mm. I know we agreed a three-year thing, but I now want to get out of the market. I've had mm. my time. I want to sell my property. Guess what? That piece of paper you've signed, mm. irrelevant. They are getting an asset back. They're selling an asset with or without you, with, with tenants or with tenants in the property, not tenants in the property, they can still sell yeah. an asset, yeah. put an auction and sell it all the way. So that's true. for me, imagine a mass, and you can you, mean, you couldn't get 10K a month for rent. Let's say you did get, to, magically you got to 10K a month. That 10K can, can be turned off. Yeah. And that's for me, it's not wealth creation. Wealth creation is free owning assets. Mm. So unless you're owning an asset, you're not creating wealth. I don't care what anybody tells you. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been trying to even use like, oh, uh, the wealth people talk about um, control everything, own nothing. Mm. And obviously people kind of can twist that with rent to rent, control, control, over own nothing. No, the wealthy ha have trust that are sat on an island somewhere, which is tax free yeah. havens, allowing to kind of own assets, just not in your name. Mm. So they still own it. It's just not them personally mm. owning the property. Mm -hmm. So don't miss, don't get misled led by that, that bullshit statement as well. So yeah. for me, if your goal is to create generational wealth, which again, I'm sorry, rent to rent. I don't know who you think you're passing this on to. You're not passing on to nobody. <laughs> it's, it's, it ends with you. <laughs> it ends with you. It literally ends with you. Um, you're trying to create this passive income opportunity. Yeah. You crisp, rent to rent is not passive. Mm. It's another draw. People are, mm. I'm going to systemize. I'm going to get people. I'm like, mate, from the fact that the only way you make money is to be the middleman between the landlord who owns the property and the tenant who rents the property off you, mm. you are in effect a glorified letting agent. Mm. Just now, you are now super incentivized to make money because mm. the only way you make money versus a letting agent is where they just manage and it doesn't, mm. if it's rented or not rented. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter to them. You have this asset where you've got to pay two grand at the end of each month, whatever mm. the number is at the end of the month. The agent don't have that problem. Mm. The letting agent is just like, if it rents, it doesn't rent, I, yeah, yeah, I don't make money, but I'm not pressured to pay you a bill yeah. um, at the end of each month. With being a renter and owner, that's very true. Yeah. You are literally liable for that guarantee when you promise a landlord. Yeah. So you're you're going to do anything and everything, even desperation sometimes just get a room filled. Mm. So your cash flow and to pay the landlord mm. month on month. So for me, that's just a full time job. You're dealing with tenants who are going to call you about issues, HMOs, whatever it's service accommodation, all these things. That they're, they're, they're kind of time intensive mm. to run as as a business. So mm. it's just not like. Again, coming back to the concept of like, I'd rather be on the bottom of the right ladder than be on the top of the ladder that mm. isn't going where I want to go. So yeah. if your goal and outcome is to create generation wealth, like financial freedom, all that stuff, it's free ownership of assets. Mm. So don't let nobody lie to you and tell you rent to rent because it's low capital entry. Like it's still possible to buy assets. People might ask still, again, foreign concept of like, oh, it's a lot of money to buy a property. But actually, no, it's not. It, it is and it is in a sense like, 
yes, there's money required to buy a property, but if you became someone valuable and you would be able to present yourself as a valuable position, i.e. someone has the know-how, can go away, buy assets, know how to allocate money correctly, guess what? Who you're valuable to? Someone that's got money. Sign a bank account, asset. There's a time, time poor, haven't got the time to do it themselves. They want to yeah. find a partner who they trust, i.e. has knowledgeable, got a team, can execute, knows what they're doing. Mm. There's a lot of doctors, lawyers, mm. Uh, sur surgeons that are just sat with on money like they just they would love to have someone like this mm. be a partner where you both own the assets yeah and you've had to all you've gained is not all you brought to the table is knowledge yeah so for me like that is a value proposition you need to provide as a worst case to mm. get you into assets as opposed to having this perceived cash flow from a rent to rent thinking you're making money I'm, I'm gonna make two grand a month i'm like okay but you're, you're not <laughs> <laughs> and even even it, what i think what spins me the most is so you ask someone that does rent to rent oh so um, how much profit are you making? And they're like, oh, we make a thousand pound profit a month. But what they don't realize is, so if you look at balance sheet, on, on a, if you're looking at asset base, i.e. a property, you have to sink five grand. So mm -hmm. on day one of starting the business, you are minus 5,000 mm pounds. -hmm. People aren't even taking, oh, no, I make a thousand pound a month. I'm like, bro, no, you know, you, know, you, ain't, you ain't made no profit yet. You're month one, <laughs> month one, you're minus mm -hmm. 4,000 pounds. Month two, you're minus four, three. Assuming there's no other things that happen or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it was all smooth. Month five is where you break even. Mm -hmm. So you are, you are at zero on month five. From month five onwards is where you start to make profit. Mm -hmm. So again, you've owned an asset for 12 months and you've only really made what, if, if, if it was a thousand pound a month, mm -hmm. six grand off one one asset. So six grand is, for me, just go ahead and get a high paying job. That's yeah. that's that's, that's, a, that's a pay increase. Mm -hmm. Then have your all your free time gone, absorbed by this property that you're trying to manage on the side for yeah. 12 months. <laughs> and if this is this is my logic. This yeah. is all like, come on, guys. You know, yeah. you can't tell me you're trying to create wealth and you're going to create mm -hmm. a job. Yeah, just go get a high paying job. Yeah, <laughs> and have your eight hours chill on the weekends. Yeah, have a drink, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Get back to work on Monday mm -hmm. within your eight hours. Who, who, who would you rather be the person that's eight hours earn that same level of money, six round more, or be the, the person that that earns six round more and has this all the time taken up by this property? <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like when, when I break on like that, people are like, yeah, okay, I hear what I you're hear saying. It. I hear it. Logically, it makes sense. It makes so, sense. Like don't don't be quick. This and don't get like like put down. Oh, you haven't, you haven't bought a property. Everyone around you buying property. Mm. Like just everyone's got their own time and like just things will happen for you in the time frame. Just just focus on the right ladder. If it's wealth creation, go and buy and figure out how to buy property. Mm. Um, there is ways you've got to become valuable. You've mm. got to raise capital. There is ways to buy. Yeah. Um, don't get sold on this. Oh, you only need five grand to get started, and you can get some thousand pound a month. No. That is not a sustainable plan. Mm. And, and another thing that pisses me off as well, oh, I'm, I'm gonna get into rent to rent um, to try and um, build up the capital required mm. to start buying. Okay. Okay, so let's do the maths. Yeah. So we said six grand. <laughs> six grand on one asset. Most people in, in their first year probably won't even do two rent to rent deals, if mm. that. So you've only made 12 grand. How many years is it gonna take for you to do one HMO to where maybe it requires a hundred grand average to right. do one deal? That's eight years. Mm. You're gonna spend eight years doing this strategy and hopefully make Mm. The hundred grand to just do one purchase. Yeah, that's true. That's a very long route. Route for me is like I wouldn't play that that game. It's way too long. Mm. Um, you you probably can accelerate that even just again just working a job and having a high income and saving much faster that way than trying to do yeah. a rental and have that all time taken up again. So yeah. it's just trying to do the maths and the logic. Like okay, actually, if I learn how to raise capital, mm. and for me, I keep saying this, guys, you can raise money faster than you can ever earn it mm. or save it. That's true. Corporations don't go when when Elon Musk wanted to buy Twitter, he didn't say, Oh, let me go, let me go earn well, I don't know how much the transaction was, a couple of billion yeah. um, pounds. Let me let me go and try and earn it. No, he went and raised money. Yeah. From <laughs> banks. And he's now paying banks. it back yeah. for the earnings that he's making from Twitter. Guess yeah. what? He got Twitter and he's put put a subscription model up straight away. Yeah. Guess what? That's the money he's made. He's just yeah. creating new revenue. Yeah. Just now pay off the loan that he's he's taking on. Yeah. That's how you that's how you amass wealth. Yeah. <laughs> you go and borrow Great. money, make more money from the asset, i.e. Mm. borrow money correctly, good debt make the money and pay you back. Mm. That asset is going to appreciate over time. Mm. And this is people are, are missing. Like, even if you've gone and borrowed money against the asset, you might feel I'm borrowing money. Okay. But by holding onto the asset, which appreciates over time, if it took you five years to pay it off, you might have gained another hundred grand equity just by holding the asset for five grand. Yeah. So being, this is not meant, time in the market is everything. You've mm. got to be in the market to amass this wealth. Yeah. You can't think I'm going to time in the market and try and get a good deal below market value. All this bullshit, again, another bullshit thing. Below market value deal. If I mean, I can, I can, the whole education, so I can just, <laughs> I can, I can just, like, just I can just pick on, yeah, because I'm yeah. like, just, just selling dreams and just selling this false concept yeah. and like, just like, 
Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's great to buy a below market value mm. deal, but if your game strategy is to go find below market value deal, you might spend two years trying to find below market. Yeah, you especially might, in this current market right now. No, don't not, get me wrong. It's not impossible. Yeah. You can maybe mm. first your first month you get a below market value deal, but mm. that is not a strategy you go out to. You, you just you, you go find trying to find great deals. Mm. If you find ones below market value, do you execute on it obviously? Mm. Um, but it shouldn't be like the be or end or i.e. there's no below market value. If I can't get twenty percent off this deal or this property price, yeah, I can't buy it. Mm. So what? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. So it's like understanding like how the game works and how do you actually capitalize on opportunities? I is enough meat in the bone. Is there enough uplift on the property? It doesn't matter if there's enough uplift on the property. If you can triple the price of the property, why does it matter that you're paying market value for the property? Yeah. There's so yeah. much room for for making money. Like you don't need to get twenty mm. percent off to start buying it and then try and make one. Like what? You've lost yeah. the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know what? I, I want to ask this question right because. Say you were starting out, right, uh, in 2024. Let's assume the conditions are the same. They are now high interest rates, yeah, you know, issue. Yeah. If you were starting out, because somebody listening to this, they're going to be like, okay, cool. I want to, you know, do what Alfred did. I want to build my portfolio. I want to raise finance, stuff like yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. You did a lot of personal development, of course. You know, yeah. you paid for courses. That's what documented. We talked about that in the previous episode, right? Do you still think that's the way to do it? Obviously, you now got a mastermind group. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, you got your network, and you also have the mastermind group. Is that? Do you think that's the best way to to get into properties? To first learn from the people around you, someone that you want to be like, yeah, and then you get into the game. Yeah, it's the whole concept of finding the who and not the how. So everyone mm. wants to find how do I get into how do I get into property? Mm. Find the who that's done it, learn from them. They're gonna teach. You, they're gonna teach you the how. Mm. It's as simple as that. So for me, I do truly believe if you're looking yeah. to start next year, 2024, find the who, who's mm. done the thing you're trying to do. And yeah. Pay them, learn from them, get into the network, whatever it is. Unfortunately, information isn't free. If you want free information, go on YouTube. That's where all my free stuff is on. Mm. If you want to go on. But again, that's only to a certain extent, like level of teaching uh, versus if you're in my network, you're having coaching calls with me. I'm spending hours mm. a week with you, helping you on your journey, helping you overcome hurdles. Again, even... Like a course to stand alone, yeah. unfortunately, isn't isn't self sufficient. Yeah, having like someone co coaching you and helping you overcome the application of actually applying information you're learning is super valuable. That's what allows you to keep moving the needle. Yeah, um, and not kind of getting like, I guess, stuck in your journey. So for me, yeah, getting educated is step one, and unfortunately, it costs money. Get used to it. If not, stay where you are. Yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> all right you know what i want to talk about growth because obviously you know it's been a year over a year and i want to understand that um so how, how how do you think you've grown in the last year and i guess what have you learned it's very every year is a growth like so i'm bad at reflection but let's 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 give it a go so i think um in terms of growth like i've realized one that i need to hire more people Okay. So, for example, on the education business, has been a lot. A lot of it's been me. Mm. Um, only recently, kind of started to employ some people to help me in that business to help kind of take the the way off my shoulders in terms of I can just focus on being good at what is I do, which is I teach others on mm. how to raise money, how to do HMO deals, and they can kind of do all the back office for me and kind of work in the back office for me, and allow me to kind of create the content, the stuff I'm good at, like people want to see more of, and allow me to just build a brand even more. So for me, that's something that I'm big on even taking into next year is just even even hire more people mm. um, into the business. So that's a key like lesson that I need to kind of, I was, I've been the bottleneck for the educational business and it's always been me, 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 me. Without me, there is nothing happening. It's just just it's just stagnant. It just slows down if I'm not doing anything. So it's, it's trying to obviously now leverage others who are great in that space. I can help the business grow and bring them on board and um, the business to help me out. Um, and just... Obviously, again, being in the game, being exposed to other people doing well, just getting new ideas and aspiring mm. to do more. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm always seeking growth. Like, growth isn't something that I just take for granted. I'm, I'm, more, I'm very curious. I'm always trying to get into new rooms, get exposed to how people have done what it is I'm trying to do or even just done whatever it is they're doing and kind of get inspiration from that. Um, so this year, again, I've met a lot of people mm. doing some serious numbers. Mm. Like the millions a month, the 500 grand a month, mm. which might sound mad. Like how does someone amass 500 grand a month? And these are, these are sub 30 year olds, by the way, just put it context. Seriously? Yeah. Like bro, there's a lot of kids <laughs> that are just- people, man. 
just just infra product space um just killing like we're just killing it man and again it's not like these things to the to the normal person might sound like very foreign and very like yeah. but again this is the importance of getting to new environments and getting exposed and creating this a new norm for you like for me that 500 grand a month mm -hmm. is that like just just a new norm now it's mm -hmm. like just that 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 is supposed to happen that is like yeah. you're, you're it's like how you're not making yeah kind of that that because you've been around that enough to kind of normalize that that is just a normal thing it's just it can be done just understand okay this is what needs to happen yeah this is what a team trust needs to look like this is how many employees you need to have to be able to reach a level of of revenue uh per month yeah and some are even doing a profit per month mm -hmm. by the way as well so some of these numbers wow. are profit as well so um for me it's just yeah it's just the same for me it's like get into new rooms get exposed to people take lessons from people and implement my business um, for example, next year, I, I want to kind of come back on a YouTube scene. I've been super bad at YouTube this year. I think yeah. I already posted like two or three videos. Okay. The entire year. I've Mad. got like, I've got loads of videos, but unfortunately this year has been a b bad year on like, in terms of like content going out mm. to my audience. So like, I'm coming back heavy next okay. year. Like I'm, oh, you know, I'd love <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't not, not see me. Cause again, I, again I'm getting frustrated with like seeing other things and I'm like, mm. I feel like I've got a lot of value to give to yeah, the marketplace. You and you got a lot of value. The more I can kind of put my opinions and mindsets and my thought process, like all these kind of even what we discussed here, the mm. whole flipping being bullshit, yeah. the rent to rent being bullshit. Yeah. Um, like not that, I guess context, depending on what your outcome is mm. for a lot of people that the, the outcome doesn't align with the strategy they're doing. Mm. So it's like, you've got to lead with your outcome. And your outcome will determine what strategy actually fits yeah. for you. And then you just know, and again, it's not about building the block of like, I want to start here and then go, no, like which of these strategies has, has the outcome that you want yeah. and figure out how can you get into that? Uh, I started doing HMO. I didn't do a buy to let's or get into HMOs. I didn't do flips or do source or rent to rent before getting into HMOs. No, I said, I need to figure out how to raise a hundred grand. I worked out that problem. I learned how to buy HMO deals. I worked out that problem as well. And I went in and did that because I knew that would give me my thousand pound plus a month from my asset versus a buy to let, which is like a few hundred pounds, which I didn't want. So it's, I just solved for the actual problem and the outcome that I want. Mm. So it's it's just getting that granular clarity on like what it is you want. Yeah. Um, so for me, yeah, next year, just <laughs> I want to push on, on the content, get my brand even bigger, Yeah. get exposed to a lot more people and kind of help a lot more people get this kind of mindset, this knowledge base of like how to do things correctly and not kind of be sold on the, the low hanging fruits just to kind of make them feel like oh, they're doing something or they're getting yeah. close to that goal. But in reality, they're not going to get close to the goal. It's just yeah. false reality. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, You might do over like a 10 year period, but a lot of people get talking about this. This isn't a 10 year game for them. They want to do this two years mm. in, <laughs> not, not, not 10 years down the line. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an effective job, isn't it? They can just yeah, do that exactly. in, their, in their career and just get the outcome through that exactly. in their career. So yeah, man. Wow. Okay. A lot of growth and a lot of growth to come. So, you know, another thing that I've been seeing a lot of people saying that, um, you know, with success, well, let, let me, let me change what I'm saying. <clears throat> financial success. Let me yeah. say financial success because success can mean different things to different people. To kind of achieve a level of financial success, you c can't be comfortable almost insinuating that you have to work all the time. So I guess from your perspective, obviously, you, you know, you built this portfolio, you're, next year you're, you're thinking about a fund and stuff like that. Is, has there been like a level of sacrifice that you've had to make to kind of, you know, even get to where you got to and then where you're looking to in the future? Yeah, I think you can't get to great heights without sacrifice. It's impossible. I, I, haven't, I haven't met anybody successful that hasn't sacrificed, whether it's time, family, relationships, friends, uh, money, uh, something's got to give to to get mm. it's it's just it's it's the law of the world like push and pull like it's, yeah. there's unfortunately just there's no way around it if you think you don't have to give up something you're just lying to yourself again um unfortunately it's an uncomfortable thing like this this financial success does come with being uncomfortable um so again like we talk about the concept of being uh comfortable being uncomfortable so growth comes through being uncomfortable when you are comfortable, there is no growth opportunities. You're just coasting. You're not even, you're just chilled. When you're uncomfortable, you're in this op like operation of like, how can I do something? How can I do this right? How can I be more yeah. efficient? How can I get out of this problem I currently face? You're in this problem solving mindset versus when you're comfortable, mate, you're just chilling, man. Like what's, mm -hmm. there's no consideration of even doing better. You're just, you're just, oh, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Why do I need to go to the gym? Why do I need to make more money? That's a comfortable mindset versus if I'm mm. like, I want to make 120 grand, 126 grand a month. <laughs> That's an idea. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm nowhere near that. I need to, I need to, I need to raise 10x what I'm making now to, mm. to kind of get there. 
Yeah. Um, and it's like, what do I need to do? Who do I need to become? Mm. Who do I need to be in my network? Who, what relationship do I need to build to be able to access that level of wealth? Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's just part of it. Unfortunately, you've got to sacrifice to get to mm. outcomes. Just unfortunately, mm. there is no easy way yeah. um, out of this. And it, it doesn't, and the thing as well, like this whole thing of like, oh, we get to this point where it's like, this whole more money, more problems. It's a, mm. I, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I can say for sure, <laughs> more money, more problems. Like, yeah. and even being around business owners, like you just, when you're a mass wealth, everyone wants a piece. People are doing everything to try and take away from you, put your name down. Mm. Uh, lawsuits, I'm sure in the future I'll have lawsuits. I'm not you trying think to, so? I'm not trying to wish on myself, but like, it's just it's just part yeah. of the game. I don't know, I don't know. Any successful person that's like mass wealth, yeah. who hasn't had something, especially in the fund, um, business where mm. you're borrowing capital, equity partners, all that mm. stuff. Um, just partners in general, like you have yeah. poor, bad business partners taking the court to get your business back. Um, just all these things happen. It's just part mm. of the game. Like you, there will be some huge, huge uh, pains and trials that will come across in business. Mm. It's just, just, just no avoiding them, man. That's crazy. It's what comes with building serious wealth. Yeah, I was gonna ask you actually if people have changed because you're quite transparent around your wealth. So have, have you noticed, you might not even care. You might be like it, it, looking it, it, at like, I don't care how you feel or yeah. what you're saying if you're not checking in and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like obviously I think for me, I say things more to inspire people not to kind of like mm. boast or say anything like, mm. but for me, I can't even boast. Like I don't, for me, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even that, see yeah. what I'm saying as boasting because yeah, I, yeah. I know people, I'm, I'm poor to some people that I'm, I'm around. I see, mm. I go out, I go out to have dinner with, yeah. like they make 10x, 100x what I make <laughs> so like to, 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 yeah. to me to the average person might think oh this guy's sure enough I, like how can he talk about this much money now I, I, don't, I, I see two grand three grand a month that's mm. and that's like cr like and I get it but like I'm just trying to expose you like people are like you were saying living, uh, living crisis I'm like bro that shit don't exist yeah you were saying <laughs> and, and you were saying like, like, like that. no yeah. you're right yeah because no it might work because I've, I've normalized this in my world where bro it's, I'm telling you it, does, it doesn't exist it does yeah. not exist mm. people are cashing in like cashing in like mm. printing money mm. and it's i've seen it in my own eyes i can't unsee it i can't unhear it i can't unthink it yeah it's imprinted in my brain so it's like different levels there's some people that the cost of living crisis isn't a thing and then there's obviously everybody else where it is a thing and yeah obviously but the argument yeah. here is point blank Mm. you are not valuable in the marketplace because mm. you was valuable in the marketplace you'd be earning more money and therefore you, yeah. you won't be seen as yeah. and like because that, that's a, it's a simple because mm. someone just got awarded a 100k contract today mm. as I've seen I don't know where in the world somewhere someone's that's just, true so it clearly isn't it's, yeah. and it's because very simply they are providing value in exchange of the money yeah. they're making so it's like if you are feeling the pull of like this financial crisis whatever you want to call it living crisis mm. you've got to think what, I, what can I do to level up Mm. to make more money so I don't feel like this ever again mm. and I kind of learned this from Grant Cardone where he, he talked about the 2008 crisis he he promised himself and his, his missus that he'll never ever ever mm. be in such a position where they're so vulnerable mm. uh, due to market collapses and stuff yeah so ever since then it's been his mission to be the best person ever to be mm. to a master's level of wealth um to never ever have to experience the next time when it happens he's going to capitalize the market. Yeah. Like I go in a mass, <laughs> everything around him. And so for me, it's like, again, getting exposed to this stuff. Yeah. This now become my belief systems. Like this, yeah. this, I, I genuinely, I don't want to ever be in a situation where, yeah, I'm like, fuck mm. that, that, that nearly like crippled me. Like, mm. like I could have been done. Yeah. Don't ever want to feel like it's that. The worst type of feeling. And I'm sure a lot of people could feel like that now. Like, yeah, they're definitely want to get out of their situation yeah and it's just yeah. investing yourself and getting to new new rooms and speaking mm -hmm. to new people like if you're feeling tapped out in your current environment everybody's just kind of like content with what they're making or like maybe just mm -hmm. all they do is complain mm -hmm. you've got to get out of that circle you've got to get in circles with people thinking about ideas yeah if your circle group aren't like discussing what opportunities are there in the marketplace how can we amass more wealth what can we do to level up you are in the wrong circle yeah that's all that's what i talk about mm -hmm. when i go dinners like my dinners my dinners are like mini masterminds <laughs> Bro, this this this, this bro, it's honestly my dinners are like mini masterminds. Yeah, because bro, everyone's talking about their businesses, mm. like um, hiring problems or ways in which they're kind of trying to crack this code on getting to five hundred k a month. Like, yeah, these are the conversations we're having. Problem solvers, yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're, they're trying yeah. to. They're, they're, and again, they're kind of they're voicing their problems because again, mm. people around the table have maybe have know how yeah. to help them have fix that problem. So this is what I mean by it's mini. I'm learning by just seeing and listening to the conversation. Yeah, of how they went about hiring, how they went about getting their, their marketing to kind of allow them to attract the leads and help them close sales on the back end. Like I'm learning just by just even sitting there. 
So it's like, it's yeah, ways, it's it's getting the right people. Man. You want to be conversations where it's empowering. They're talking about yeah. the right stuff, not bullshit stuff that's happening. Mm-hmm. If you're here busy talking about footballism, what they do, how they how they score the goal, and Ryan, I ain't sat, I ain't sat around the table in a long time where guys are talking about football and and they're talking about how <laughs> you watch that goal, did you see, did you see his goal. I'm like, bro, see his goal? Do you see your bank account? <laughs> do you see your bank account? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're looking at the wrong place and uh, worrying about the wrong things in life. Uh, this is so. Yeah, this has been a great conversation. Every time I have this conversation, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it's gonna be a banger, and it's been, it's been another one. And to be honest, like, I think sometimes, you know, maybe w- people might feel like what you're saying might come across as harsh, but I think that. You're saying it to the people who want to level up. You're not. If yeah, you don't want to level it's, it's up, not, it's not it's, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, guys, look, exactly. I, I, exactly. I've learned. The, I think I, I'm a. What's the? I think I'm a sucker for like trying to help everyone. Yeah. I just want everyone. I want everyone to do good. Yeah. I want everyone to be able to see that it's possible. They can. They can do well yeah. in life. And so when I say things, people might think, "Oh, he's been extreme. He's been fucking arrogant, prick." Mm. I'm like, cool, what are you gonna call me? I'm just trying to show you it's possible. I'm, mm. I am not, I didn't come from wealth. I, I've just chosen that I want this and I've gone for it and I'm going for it. Nothing's stopping me. I've just, that's just who I am. Yeah. And so when I'm going places, I'm trying to still show, like, I could, I could, bro, I could just hide all this stuff. You could just, hide, but you're not. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah I'm showing yeah. you, like, this, like, this environment, this, this is where I went to learn, this is yeah. what I did, this is why, how I got to where I am. Like, I've documented the whole entire thing. Mm. So it's like, yeah, people might look and, oh, yeah, but not everybody wants, some people just want to chill. And, and yeah. Like I said, for those that don't want to chill, this is not for you. Probably stop listening to, I don't know how you got to find this one in the podcast. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, they you got probably, to this point. It means you probably, they want to yeah, you, you don't listen. So if you've got, you're still here, thank you for listening. And obviously if you're not, you'd have dropped off a long, long time ago. Yeah. Let me start with a big number. You're like, oh, this guy is fucking on planet yeah. Earth. Uh, some, somewhere else, <laughs> another planet. You left a long time ago. So it's like the guys that are aspiring, that like, there's a there's a bit in their body that just like, is unsettled about what they're making in life, what they're doing in life. And again, it's okay to be in a, in a level where maybe you're not happy, but it's mm. you, that's just a moment. That's just your life at the moment. Mm. Doesn't mean your life has to be that forever. You've got to now get into the right rooms, have the better conversations mm. to now understand what it takes to become this new person. Yeah. And amassing wealth is actually like an identity thing. Mm. It's kind of a hard thing to kind of get able to realize. So even our Dubai master with myself and Tyler, we talk a, bit, a lot about like, you've got to switch your identity. Like the person that amasses a million pounds a month or what it, like bringing up 10K a month mm. versus the person that makes 2K a month are two different people, mm. two different people. So it's like, you've got to have this, you've got to think, what does the future person that amasses a level of wealth need to be like? What does their life look like? What do they, what do they eat? What do they do like health wise? Um, how do they pray? What does the business look like? How many employees do they have? Mm. That's well, these are all things that need to be in yeah. place. Allow to a massive level of wealth. It doesn't happen just by yourself. Yeah. So it's it's, it's an identity switch of who you are now to who you need to become to allow it's mass a mass wealth. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we, we can get into this a lot, but see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, definitely doing part three, man. When the funds, when the funds launch, uh, where can the people find you if they obviously they want to follow you? You know, learn more and stuff like that. Um. So my name Alfred Jade. Um. All socials. I like if you type in Google, even you mm. can. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Um, I'm I'm everywhere. Um, but YouTube, I'm planning to come back and yeah, really drop like a lot of my mindsets, my thought process, world creation, all that stuff. I want, I want to try and drop a lot more out. I feel like there's a lot of value I can provide. So check out the YouTube, subscribe to that. I will be putting some more stuff on there coming new year. Amazing, amazing. Have you got uh, any final words for, yeah, obviously the audience? I just, just be great. Mm. Be great, like go for wherever you want. Do not settle for like being this mediocre person, like just go for what you want. There is nothing wrong with trying to empower yourself to be the best version of yourself. Um, it's, for, it's for you to take or for you not to take, up to you. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro, for coming on again for a second time, you know, just giving us an update on what you're doing. Sounds like you're doing amazing work. Wish you good luck, obviously, in 2024 as well. Everything's going on. And yeah, man, I just, I really like doing episodes of you because I think, it gets us to expand our minds and gets us to you know, think beyond where we are, right. which I think we're in a time right now, like we, we're talking about cost of living crisis, but what do they say? They say like in crisis, it's opportunity. So I think this is for the people, obviously, who I think, okay, you know what? I want to do more on it. You know, there's always opportunity out there. Yeah. So yeah, and no, I really appreciate you for jumping onto the pod. Uh, watch as listeners, thanks for tuning into this episode of Take Off Experience and we'll see you next week's episode. <laughs>